I actually really love to start with this image because it shows me the extreme length that we people are actually willing to go to to supply those two people that are living behind that mountain there somewhere to supply them with energy. My name is uh, Therese van Dongen and I'm a designer and I have a background in biology. And I'm fascinated by nature because it sometimes really finds its own ways to create energy and sometimes even light. And some of you may be familiar with this beautiful phenomena. It's called bioluminescence. And sometimes in summer when the uh, temperatures rise, there's these tiny microalgae that cause this complete wave to light up whenever the wave turns. And you know what actually really strikes me is that you know, we people, we've, we've, we've been on the moon, but I feel sometimes like we barely know our own planet. Like, to give you an example, um, whenever there's a deep sea expedition and uh, these scientists, they come back and you ask them like, hey, you know, wow, uh, how was it? And they'll be like, uh, yeah, fine, we discovered 14,000 new species, uh, how was your day? What? <laughs> so, but I have to be honest. Uh, a while ago, I had really no idea of the existence of something called a brittle star, but it's actually a very special sea creature with a little trick. That whenever there's a predator approaching, he's in danger, he's actually capable of simply dropping one arm. <laughs> and his arm will continue to glow for a few minutes and the, it will lure the predator away. And happily ever after lives the brittle star, who of course can simply grow a new arm. And squids are also actually really something. Because many squids are actually known to live in a kind of symbiosis with bioluminescent bacteria. And the symbiosis is a kind of a friendship, where the squid it provides for nutrients for these bacteria, and in re that he does that in return for a really special favor. Invisibility. And sea predators are known, like sharks, they're known to hunt from below. And they will notice whenever there's a shadow passing over, like a nice squid. But this squid, it actually, every day, it collects a new set of these bioluminescent bacteria on the bottom of its skin, cancelling out its own shadow. And this uh, phenomenon is called counterluminescence. And also octopuses, they're, they're amazing. They are known to communicate really in various ways with each other, with these bioluminescent bacteria that they have on their skin. For instance, to attract mates. Well, if anything, they attracted me because three years ago I started to do a project with these bioluminescent bacteria that were derived from the skin of an octopus. And this octopus was a simple uh, species of a sample that we got from the fish market in Delft. Um, and together with the Technical University in Delft, we uh, actually managed to um, isolate some of these bacteria from its skin. And it resulted in a big glowing pot full of bioluminescent bacteria. And of course, I was overjoyed, you know, when we had this as a result. To be so close to some of these secrets of nature. But also immediately, maybe from a designer's point of view, I really felt that I had this obstacle that I had to overcome because these bacteria, in order for them to emit light, they need oxygen. So in the lab, to keep them lit, we actually had to attach some pumps. And I thought that was such a shame because, you know, this light, it's all completely natural. Why do we need pumps? So with this designer point of view, I was walking around in the lab and thinking, and then I, at some point I saw these dancing little bottles and I turned the light off and then this happened. And of course, because in all these bottles there's oxygen and because of the movement, this oxygen was mixing, causing all these bacteria to completely light up. So I started to create these moving models. And this resulted two years ago in my graduation project at the Design Academy in Eindhoven. It's a, an object in my, my project called Ambio. 
and it consists of two heavy weights. And when you slightly push it, you bring it out of balance, and the fluid will start to move. And it, this mixture will cause uh, the bacteria to light up. I will now show you a little video. So recently, I've actually been uh, diving into a, a new project, not maybe as literal as this image may imply, um, but it's electrochemically active bacteria. Again, bacteria, but these ones, you can uh, usually find them in the, the muddy soil of a, of a river or a lake. And these bacteria, they actually they can excrete electrons which in other words is they can produce energy. And of course, we humans, we also produce energy all the time, but we use this energy to talk to you, or maybe to take a nice walk, or to create a baby, which also takes a lot of energy, I can tell you that. <laughs> but these ones, they actually excrete it as a kind of a waste project, like we would breathe out CO2. So, what do you do when you're a scientist? You take a little bit of that mud and you uh, take it to the lab and you put it in a reactor. You attach some pumps, some wires, some meters. And voila, you have actually a reactor that is emitting energy. But I have to say, from a designer's point of view, this doesn't really sell. <laughs> Not yet. Although it's alive and it can power a little lamp. And these uh, specific ones, it's a kind of microbial fuel cell that was uh, created at the Center for Microbial Ecology and Technology in Ghent, the University of Ghent. Um, and these electrochemically active bacteria that I'm talking about, there's actually been extensive research in, the, in these organisms for the past 20 years, maybe, into also larger applications, like, for instance, cleaning out our wastewater while at the same time producing energy. But unfortunately, after all these years of research, many scientists now believe it to be kind of a dead track in science. And already while I was studying biology, I encountered that a lot of these beautiful discoveries in the field of nature and science, that they would hardly make it outside the doors of a laboratory. And I thought that was such a shame. So, I see this opportunity for myself as a designer, and for many other designers, to look at research like this and see if we can start to co-create by maybe taking a much smaller design approach. And my personal aim is actually to bring all of you a little bit closer to the power of nature and energy. And in order to do that, I've been working together with a scientist. And I created recently my latest project, which is called Spark of Life. And Spark of Life is actually power, an artificial light which is powered by life. And it works with uh, four um, compartments, with e and each compartment is completely filled with this electrochemically active bacteria and a special electrode. And this was developed by VITO, which is the Flemish Research Institute. Um, and each compartment will power one LED that shines its light through the lamp and the fluid and the glass. And, you know, we people, we are so used to, when we come home, you just press the switch to turn your light on, Bam, there's the light. But this lamp, it actually doesn't even have a plug, let alone that it has a switch. The only thing that you have to do is actually have to feed it. <laughs> Once every two weeks. You have to give it a little teaspoon of acetate, 
And then every month you have to completely refresh it by uh, taking out all the water, putting in some new tap water with some salt and vitamins, and your lamp is good to go for another month. And I know some of you may find it really weird that you know you have to nurture your lamp, but I actually find it really beautiful because I think how much closer can you get to nature and science than by taking care of it? So I will take my latest project, Spark of Life, into production, and I sincerely hope that all of you will, just like me, have to ask your neighbors to feed your lamp whenever you go on a holiday. <laughs> Thank you.